Hi, Dr. Sir. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Good morning. So we'll be starting today's webinar. Last time I couldn't give ma'am much of her time because we had so many doctors in. Uh, but today it is just going to be you, ma'am. So the whole arena is yours, and you can uh, like uh, talk about everything regarding insurance and all. Because these are the things that we always like. I mean, India is a magnificent country, but uh, the fact remains that there is this disparity between the people who are happy and the people who always need something more and they are ignored. And uh, when justice is denied, chaos is what um, that happens. So uh, we need to know about our rights. We need to know why is it that the children who really deserve the right kind of treatment gets uh, denied, the basic basic things in life, like a proper education, proper chances at uh, livelihood, at living. So that is why we people are uh, here today, right? To find a solution together. Uh, oh, yes, is... let me know. Uh, Dr. Supriya Chaudhary is there or uh, someone else? Yeah, it is like doctors. I mean, Supriya Chaudhary, there is a name. There is an entry. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, Smita, ma'am. Hi, good morning. I'm so happy to see you here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hello, ma'am. Yeah, yes. I like this topic so much that I thought that I will surely join this meeting. So, Supriya is my junior and she is very capable pediatric cardiologist right now in Guwahati. Okay, hi, ma'am. Ma Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, I mean, yes. Yeah, it is 11 o'clock and uh, let's uh, go official from this point onwards. Uh, a very warm welcome and a very beautiful morning to all who uh, took time to join us uh, in our mission uh, to get justice uh, for those who are denied justice for our CHDs. And uh, to make it more official, let me call upon Suchish Mehta Haldar to uh, address everyone and uh, to welcome them to this meet. I also welcome Dr. Rashmi Grover. She is a pediatrician. Dr. Prabhat Kumar, yes. Dr. Prabhat Kumar. <laughs> Welcome, Dr. Prabhat Kumar. Yeah, many doctors. Yeah, our pediatric cardiologist, pediatrician, yeah. they are there. So happy. I mean, I'm so happy everyone. Uh, like, we are all together in this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, such a Shmita. Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, hey, good morning. Such a yeah. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning and hello, everybody. And uh, we, I welcome everybody to the third webinar of this group called the Justice for Heart Warriors, who have been working in this field for quite some time now. Uh, today's topic of the webinar is um, our, uh, sorry, I'm completely lost. <laughs> today's topic is insurance, disability benefits, and medical fitness criteria for CHD. So let us first welcome our chair, Dr. Rajesh Sharma, sir, who is a world-renowned pa pediatric cardiologist and currently associated with Fortis Hospital Delhi and Apollo Hospital Indraprastha. We thank you so much, sir, for joining our uh, webinar today. Next, we welcome our renowned pediatric cardiologist, Dr. Smita Mishra, ma'am, who has kindly agreed to give us our, uh, be our guest speaker today. Uh, both uh, our uh, guest speaker and our chair have been associated with this group far more than I have. I've joined recently and uh, their contribution to this field uh, is very well known. They have authored papers on this very topic which we are going to discuss today. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome everybody else who's come, the other doctors and the pediatric cardiologists and the pediatricians who's found, their, uh, found time in their busy schedule to join today for our webinar. I thank you and we are so grateful that all of you are here today for this talk. Thank you. Now I welcome our moderator, Sajni Man, to start the webinar. Thank you so much, Sutishmita. And uh, there is another thing. Uh, apart from being an awesome doctor, uh, an amazing pediatrician, uh, Smita Mishra Ma'am is a beautiful poetess too. And all the pain that we people suffer, she has put through and through beautiful lines, uh, uh, which is like uh, totally uh, touched our hearts. And I would uh, request Irisma to please recite the poem and we'll be starting the webinar posted after the poem. Uh, Ma'am would be like explaining to us everything about the topic that uh, uh, is today's, that is part of today's agenda. Yes, uh, Risma, please, Ma. <laughs> Poem is zero. 
once upon a time on a bank of a river, democracy and bureaucracy were starting amongst themselves. While humanity, held by humanitarians, was trying to free itself. There was a little boat sailing through with Jiro sitting on it. Suddenly, the boat started sinking and Zero was about to be drowned deep. Humanity couldn't free itself, so shouted to democracy for help. Democracy asked bureaucracy. Was there any vote on little boat? Bureaucracy smiled and assured, no worries, it's only a zero. It doesn't belong to any caste, tribe, and it is dumb, has even no language. Democracy asked humanity, what she wants when it's a zero only and has been already drawn. Please help his skin with financial assistance. So at least they have better boat when crossing across the river. Democracy and bureaucracy smiled cunningly and told her to talk to humanitarians. They may help by public demonstrations asking for national and international aid. Democracy said to bureaucracy, enjoy if there is no vote. Statistics won't be a problem. Bureaucracy bowed smilingly and said, yes, boss. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I request Dr. Rajesh Sharma to speak a few words to us. Yes, Dr. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, good morning to everybody. And it is a great honor that uh, you invited me for this uh, very important uh, meeting on this very important topic. Uh, and uh, the poem that the poet poem that uh, Dr. Smita uh, wrote and which is which was just narrated just now is so appropriate because the incidence of CHD is like maximum one in 100 live births. So 99% of us do not know the reality of CSD because they don't experience CSD. And so it falls on the blind spot of society, of the judiciary, of the government. And because it has, like the middle class, it has no vote bank here. So because there are no numbers, today anybody who has to get his work done should either be a disruptionist or should be very wealthy. If you do not have a vote and if your numbers are limited, then you have it is becomes very difficult and CSD falls in that category. Uh, one of the good things is that lately in the government's list of disabilities, certain congenital abnormalities have gotten included. And those are uh, the thalassemia, sickle cell, uh, and, and that emboldens her to pursue our own goal of getting CSD included, uh, actually all heart disease included in the list of disabilities, not just CSD, including coronary artery and acquired heart diseases also. Uh, because it is well-deserved, these children and these adults definitely have disabilities. A lot of them survive without operations into late life. A lot of them survive with operations after late life, after, uh, into late life. And they face various empirical rules imposed by different sections of, uh, of life, like insurance, of employment, and there is no set criteria for them. So they are inappropriately disadvantaged. The person who deserves to be treated equal to the normal, to the normal population does not get equally treated. The person who deserves a uh, certain uh, consideration for his disability does not get that concern and it is a disadvantage and a, and a, a, a misjustice on both sides hence it is important that you know we pursue this uh, line of action and get the government to recognize that chd and all heart disease has to be included in the list of disabilities uh, Smita and I have written, mainly Smita has been instrumental in writing the article. I was just, uh, uh, I just uh, proofread the article and she did the, all the work on it. And this is on the disabilities, which has been published in the Indian, Indian uh, Cardiothoracic Journal, which I would invite all of you to go through. Uh, 
and this gives uh, us an important reference to work on in the future. So I would now uh, invite Dr. Smita to shed some light on this topic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajesh Sharma. It's been an honor to have you here and uh, hearing from you uh, about our own concerns. It, it really connects us at a deeper level. Thank you so much, sir. Smita, ma'am. <laughs> So, uh, hi, Sajni, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Sharma, sir, for uh, keep the ball uh, rolling. I would like to say, yes, I did all the basic work for the program, and I will keep on showing since when I started. But I would uh, say each and every one, if something happened good in this particular direction, and if this document uh, gets some recognition, and it will make a lot of a big framework so that all contribution comes from Dr. Rajesh Sharma, who believed it. So the most important thing, the uh, craft, the people who are artists, who are the uh, people who are doing craft, uh, they can do things, but unless somebody is there to understand the work. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajesh Sharma. And it is my honor that I worked with you and I got trained with you. So why it's not moving? Um, uh, can anyone help with this slide? I mean, it's the first slide. Can yeah, you watch it's the fine. Next one? So yeah, yeah. I have put, I have uh, really this beautiful poster you put for me, Sajni, and whoever is made this. I have put another uh, cartoon uh, in beside. You can see that, and because insurance, disability benefit, medical fitness criteria, fast CSDs in India are still to be there. So we are talking virtual things in the virtual platform. Thanks uh, to late Dr. Rajan Tendon, Dr. Rajesh Sharma, President PCSI, Dr. Krishna Kumar, who accepted this proposal in 2015, but it could not be taken ahead, Dr. Ramakrishnan. Then this uh, draft became the draft of IACTS, Indian Association of Cardiothoracic Surgeon. Thank you, Dr. Upi Yadav, editor for the journal, Dr. Hiremat, secretary, Dr. Yugal Mishra, Dr. Shu Nair, the president then, and Dr. Manish Bansal, who always, uh, who actually helped me in shaping this uh, write-up. Dr. Mahesh, Dr. Prashant, who aligned the whole uh, effort uh, with the parents group. So that is a very important thing. and. Of course, the right, uh, the this group right to life with the dignity for all, uh, and the this has been made by uh, Apu K. George. It's very, I mean, we are proud of you, Apu. So we know heart disease in children can be congenital, a congenital defect, maybe with genetic basis or without a genetic cause. Mostly, they are a, a cyanotic heart disease. Uh, prevalence is more can be shunt lesion, obstructive lesion, and alkapa, and mostly the life is quite good. I am not saying they are always uh, simple. They can be very very complex, but most of the time, the treatment here is more effective. And the other group is cyanotic, where things are more complex. Saturation right from beginning is less, and this is divided into our classify as top physiology, TJ physiology, admixture physiology, and admixture physiology and TJ physiology mostly present with the heart failure, while top physiology present with the cyanotic spell. And then there are special categories like valvular lesion. They can be very serious Epstein anomaly of the tricuspid valve, which can present with the cyanosis or without cyanosis in presence or absence of ASD, then congenital mitral valve abnormalities, the corrected transposition, which may be cyanotic or cyanotic, and the Eisenmenger syndrome, which is a late phase, a complication of the shunt lesion and the admixture and TJ physiology cyanotic heart diseases and of course the rhythm disorder. So these are the spectrum and besides we can have acquired uh, heart disease, diseases which may have a genetic cause. They may present later, but they may have a genetic cause. There may be a rheumatic heart disease, Kawasaki disease. Both of them can be uh, can have a genetic predisposition, cardiomyopathy is the constructive pericarditis. So uh, the babies born with the uh, heart defect, or even having heart defect later, uh, do they have any rights? So most important part that you should know, they have right never to be subjected to discrimination. It's a uniform uh, 
idea. Best interest of child, their vulnerabilities, their right to survival, development, respect. So everything and this right has been accepted world over United Nations Convention of the Rights for the Child. And it was adopted in 1989 and entered into the force in 1990. And in India, it was ratified in 1992. So, uh, these are the defect and this is the right but the first step for the parents i would like to say that please whenever you expect a disease go for the advice of pediatric cardiologist intervention must be done if can be done irrespective of comorbidities down syndrome intervention no it's not like that. They learn maintaining dental hygiene, nutrition, discipline, disease, appropriate physical activities, and the sports activity, ice and mango syndrome, severe sinusis, single ventricle. You one has to avoid pregnancy, surrogacy is an option, and second level of ultrasound should be there. It can make things easier sometimes man, um, in management and sometimes by termination. And the usual uh, reason behind no intervention is lack of time, wrong advice, and denial on the part of family. It is not the finance, because somehow if you are determined, you will get finance from somewhere. Then this is the article 23, which says your right to special care and support if you are disabled. You will say that congenital heart disease, the heart child with the heart disease is not considered as disabled but the reason is because you don't know your rights children they cannot claim and the parents they never know they they never knew that is the reason so uh birth defects and disabilities this is a since early uh, of this uh, 2000 uh, this thing uh people knew that it's a public health issue for the 21st century and that is why this poem was important. So we need to understand that isolated, we are isolated, but if we combine each other, then there is a power in unity. Sangathan mein shakti hoti hai. So that's why Dr. Rajesh Shama, under the leadership of Dr. Rajesh Shama and PCSI, we are trying to recruit Indian Academy of Pediatrics and Indian Association of Pediatric Surgeons to make a national council for the children with the birth defect. The birth def congenital heart disease is 1%, not even less than 1% uh, prevalence, but if birth defect we take combined, it becomes around 7%. That's why then it becomes a vote. It's not alone a vote, a zero. So that is very important that we should combine our effort, we should shake hand with the other groups. Uh, why heart barriers are isolated? So we never knew the role of a stakeholder in the interest group. On the basis of one or more shared concern, attempts to influence the public policy in its favor, usually done by lobbying the members of government. So only when you have a unified attempt, that's why Sajni, I requested all of you that please make the, uh, uh, make the society first, then only we can go. So this is my work, 2003, this is uh, first in India of its own kind when we started is Pandan, looking at a patient with the Eisenmenger syndrome. And uh, uh, this is group of the patient which we operated so uh, um, this we started in 2003. We started operating free of cost in 2006. Then we came to know that cardiac disability is not disability because we were not able to channelize the funds meant for the uh, for the disabled from uh, uh, poor children uh, because there was cardiac disability was no disability. So then I started working on this project, which we published and Dr. Rajesh Sharma just talked about. So what were observations from, from my this extended family? They were all my family because I was meeting them, say, every one month. So definitely they are, they grew, they were small children, now they are big children and I know their problem. So the uh, observations were like the chemical, one chemical engineer lost job after accidental detection of mama. What was there? It was a top. Top was good anatomy, operated and company fired him. He was a cardiac patient now. Then 
again another engineer rejected for job why there was a small murmur eco revealed one millimeter pd i tried to close it there was it was very difficult to negotiate a catheter death of a patient after talk prepare why there was meningitis and local hospital refused to attend him death of a patient with well replacement why the girl eloped with the boyfriend and never told that i am having some disease and was operated for this and uh, needed a anticoagulation continuous anticoagulation and i am uh, uh, monitoring and you uh, like we personally attend arrange the money around say uh, 3.5 lakhs for this patient and she died during the childbirth because of the uh, clot so and baby also died so patient of tof absent pulmonary given btition at the 8 eight years of age under the public private partnership why it was i was surgery they never wanted to spend more then four year old operated for severe infundibular stenosis and subsequently developed the subaortic membrane severe aortic stenosis and any government scheme will not pay the second time who will pay for this second surgery so there are huge number of the issues uh, public uh, private partnership fails because as finance are less or so go for palliation instead of corrective surgery is a is a rule rather than exception uh, operation on babies who didn't need a surgery for the small ast small ast they will not operate when uh, baby is very sick because the cost is exorbitant and medical legal issues the patient presenting with us in our program were sick malnourished worm infested hygiene is always an issue for the post op patient marriage child child bearing was ultimate goal it was not like you are going to uh, study and doing other things but will it with marriage will be possible or child bearing will be possible these were the questions we need to answer all the time so uh, this uh, particular uh, you can see this letter was written on monday 12 january 2009 when i wrote to dr tandon and uh, told him that we consider csd as no disability with normal insurance and job benefit or disability eligible for government support before that we need some criteria for classification and i have try to do that so this is what in 2009 i started doing now what uh, what uh, was a part of this letter this uh, file why a patient with the cardiac disease uh, limiting the functional capacity is disabled because a cardiac patient is incapacitated by illness in functional term which results in impairment of self esteem and he starts facing environmental and attitudinal barrier so a child with the congenital heart disease may study even higher may achieve more but so many times cannot because of this environmental and attitude factors so uh, then why india needs a different approach for the from the developed country obviously we have more uh, have not rather than have so that is the reason so these were the things why this document was uh, created and goal was to make a working group which can create a categorization of pediatric cardiac diseases causing restriction of the diseases and disability separate out the cardiac diseases when patient is capable of living a normal life without restriction to bring them under the existing insurance policies to avoid undue bias in jobs so you should understand a patient with the asd may be functionally absolutely normal and if you go for the athletes uh, the guidelines for the uh, athletes you will find that a very a, a asd less than 6 mm ra post of asd with the normal pa pressure can go for any competitive sports so but this is not true for our children because uh, this remains the individual discretion if somebody wants to accept it will accept it if it doesn't want to cannot so that's why i wrote another letter in 2015 and then i actually quoted a uh, particular paper and calculated from that that at least 28 lakhs children pool patients will be there even if they were operated uh, we will be having 
28 lakhs operated patient in the 14 years time. And this was written in uh, 2015. This is 2022. So 2028, you, you can calculate that. Then they will be looking forward to society and nation to find a respectful place, craving for fruitful life, job, marriage, children. How would they know that they are disabled when it comes to get job opportunities, normal, when they need support or social security, unless we have a baseline literature. So uh, this all exercise was done because in 2011, there was uh, like upgradation of the disability list and the dynamic causes were accepted in this list. And this act was under the consideration from Rajya Sabha, but we could not actually make a consensus and it could not be done. But one of the reason why we could not uh, done this because of lack of the parent uh, groups. There was there there were no parent groups. So this is very important role you people are taking now. This is one of my patient and now going for marriage. Was so happy and she is a BMS doctor. So how it happened in the US? So you can see that people were making different uh, pressure group. Those were the parent groups and they were actually talking in unity and that's how they got the. Uh, disability benefits in there, in particular in US, and also the insurance. So, uh, what could be our way forward? So, first thing we should always prevent heart diseases, congenital heart diseases, by avoidance of risk factors. So, we need to disperse the knowledge about that. Radiation is in my, and also supplement the micronutrients uh, and rubella vaccination. Then secondary prevention can be second level anomaly scan, better planning for the intervention or sometimes termination can be advised. Then uh, we can get, for, then the secondary prevention also um, can be, uh, can include the uh, surgery early intervention with the help of uh, private part, uh, uh, public private partnership and your support and government scheme for the ECWs. Then preconception or early post-conception health insurance with yearly revision is the way forward for the middle class who are not included in Ayushman scheme and so many other schemes. So probably a uh, this uh, chance of having a uh, health insurance uh, should be there. It can be done. It is done in US. Uh, uh, and obviously, this is included in as an extended package for the maternity coverage and sometimes as a early new, uh, the early post conception period when you cannot make a diagnosis for uh, de birth defect. One can go for a very good uh, insurance scheme and there will be no loss for even the insurance scheme. So that is what we are proposing. We have written, Dr. Rajesh Sharma is here under his leadership. We are writing to um, Confederation of Indian Industries to consider this and recruit, recruit the all other insurance agencies. There are many, like the Star Health is nowadays popularizing that we are doing, we are going to give newborn coverage, but actually what they are asking that you go for anomaly scan and if anomaly scan is normal, then you are going to get a coverage, which is not a very beneficial idea. So uh, the first trimester health insurance will work because incidence is seven, less than 7%. So it will work for the insurance agencies. If premium, premium can be customized. Widening of the insurance net, net will help. It will promote a second level anomaly scan. And of course, it will reduce the burden of the birth defect, complex uh, birth defect. And to improve the quality of government in, sponsored intervention program like the CGHS, ESI, where there is a lot of undervaluation of the procedure. Now that can go to probably uh, this insurance agencies and that will be a better uh, uh, facilitation of the promotion of the this fraternity. So probably uh, and high end uh, surgeries can be done with the more skillful people. Otherwise there will be brain drain. 
So we came out with this uh, particular, uh, I told you that it is started in 2009. It is a milestone and opportunity in cardiac care in India. It's a very, very important paper. Proposed method for evaluation and categorization of functional capacity of children, adults, and adults with the cardiac diseases to bring them in existing social justice system by creating the cardiac disability idea uh, criteria. What are the disadvantages of not caring enough if we are not providing the insurance? If we are not giving the disability benefit for a particular group of the patients, this is not caring enough. So timely treatment will be missed and their AVSD will become Eisen Menger. A top will become a functionally disabled uh, uh, right ventricle. The CSD with syndrome, there will be no opportunity to intervene in other dimension like the developmental goals. You cannot achieve that. You will keep on running after them for their congenital heart disease induced uh, disability. But unfortunately, even uh, doctor fraternity, the bureaucrats, the government, they will say no insurance to cardiac patient. Why? They uh, it will be they are very minuscule. Sometimes they will say, Why should you increase the uh, financial burden on government? Then they will say, Don't do it, is a PNDT rule. No second level ultrasound should be done. There should be no disability status. So, by both the hand, what they will do, they will increase the birth defects and they will not provide the social security to them. This is a very funny situation, very uh, I mean, very pathetic situation when you do what you do, it converts into increasing the burden of uh, disability level. And you say that we cannot provide a disability status. I mean, it's, it's like that. So this particular paper gives cardiac disability score. It gives not only the subjective criteria, but also objective criteria. There are three tables and these three tables, you can all kind of uh, heart defect are included into that. So it will be very extensive if you go through that. But if you are looking only for your one disease, you will find yourself placed somewhere. So that is the beauty of these table, table A, B, C, which are for, further subcategorized into five groups. So if you are having a heart defect, unoperated, are operated, are palliated, or you are now having a residual, uh, residual lesion like the pulmonary arterial hypertension, or systemic hypertension, or some rhythm, distribute, uh, rhythm disorder. So you will be having your place the particular patient will be having place somewhere in table A, B, C. And only by knowing that in which table you are, you will know the kind of care you need. So it is like a this case scenario. Uh, I like this is a five-year-old child with the certificate as B3D1. So if it is a group B, that means significant hemodynamic effect is there. Though intervention right now is not needed, but subsequently will be needed. Then subdivision three means it is a hemodynamic significant, but some palliative procedure has been done. So this patient was post tension SpO to 85%, not needing anything just now, but obviously after two years will need another surgery. So this is how everything can be explained by these tables. Then Coming to insurance, what are the insurance options for the CSD patient, kids, as well as adults? This is the question. Aja, okay, uh, Sajni, we can come to your questions. Uh, okay, ma'am, just uh, one second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, regarding insurance, right, ma'am? We'll start with that, right? Uh, yeah. So what are the insurance you ask? The, what are the insurance options for the CSD patient, yeah. kids as well as adults? And who do we address our grievances yeah. regarding yeah. our insurance? So I wrote a very important line. You should know your rights. That is very important. You have to keep your eyes open. So now you must know that IRDA guidelines are there. 
IRD in September 2019 issued guidelines on the standardization of the exclusions in the health insurance contracts, which stated that no insurance company will incorporate internal congenital disease, genetic disease or disorder as exclusions in the terms and condition of policy contract. So now you must be included in any such kind of insurance uh, program. Okay? Uh, yes, it will not give you, but this IRDA guidelines is there probably uh, if somebody is saying no, uh, you can challenge that. Now, if we challenge, what is the procedure? Should we write to the IRDA saying that this particular, but there is no proof because everything nowadays goes over the phone. And phone recordings are not uh, considered when there is a no, legal. No, no, no. This is the uh, you have to go through email. That is always the best way. Okay. Otherwise, messaging, messaging is uh, can stand in court. And the second thing is you should go through e email. You should never go through phones. Okay. You so write it. Uh -huh. You write a email and get answer from email. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, without a proof that they uh, rejected it on the grounds that the child has CHD, um, there is nothing we can do. We need the proof for that, right, ma'am? No, no. If you are writing an email, you write an email that I have represented this is this. You were, like you said, you took this time. You, your agent called me and he said, hey, I cannot get this because this is a CHD. Then uh, they will respond, no, this was done or this was not done. If they no, no response means they are accepting that this interaction was going on. Okay, right. Okay. I think your lawyer can say that, but I think the a, a email, if they are not responding, that means they are accepting that uh, they have no answers. Okay, okay. ma'am. Hmm. Yes, because I so already faced that. Nadi so wants to say something, I think. Uh -huh. You yes. just please, uh, Dr. Bhandari is our uh, secretary, uh, a central IAP, and he is a very, very knowledgeable person. He was, uh, he's also associated with neonatal uh, forum, and he's very much uh, uh, kind of uh, experienced person on, in, in all these things. So kindly uh, get him in. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Bhandari. Please do enlighten us on what to do. How do our children get... Uh, insurance because they give in the uh, like their site and all policy bazaar site very clearly says that uh, chd is covered as per irda rules uh, 2019 they are covered and when we apply we pay the first premium we wait and then later on i was given the report that they, uh, um, the doctor's panel rejected saying that uh, uh, your child is unfit to get a uh, insurance now <laughs> i really did not know what else to do because the whole co communication went on over phone so i couldn't record or anything so I don't have any evidence regarding that, but this is actually what happened in spite of the fact that they very broadly uh, represented on the website that it is available. And there were like AIA, lot of insurance companies, uh, Star Health, everyone was saying that we are ready to give the insurance. But when it really came to, I even applied, I paid the first premium, I paid the extra amount that was needed. They told me there would be an extra waiting period of two years. I was ready for that. And in spite of all the things that they said, I said, okay, they finally rejected the application. So I really don't know what to do here, doctor, because if my son got it, I could okay, have told him my group allow, doctor, uh, allow Dr. Bhandari to speak. Okay, yes, sir. Well, uh, good morning, friends, and thanks, Dr. Smita, for such kind. Uh, but uh, I'll just share my experience that I was Secretary General of National Neonatology Forum, and this newborn insurance at the insurance for a child right from birth. This issues were being faced by neonatology people and there were frequent denials by the insurance companies. And I'm happy to share with you that it was the initiative of National Neonatology Forum Committee on this, that we were able to persuade IRDA to issue these guidelines that in newborn has to be insured right from day one and the congenital uh, disease have to be covered. But still, <clears throat> implementation, I'm uh, saddened to share with you that the implementation is far away. The insurance companies, they are just in simple language I can make, uh, tell you that they are making fool of the public. Yes. And, and they are just finding out excuses to deny the claims. They write a fine print and on that pretext, 
uh, on one pretext or the other they are denying the insurance is not widely available uh, to the general public through for the congenital diseases lot of hard work has to go on insurance has to act and i'm really proud that our dr smita mishra is working very hard on these lines also and we are hopeful that things will improve and in the meanwhile our job is to spread the awareness of this uh, guidelines and rules and regulations because even the some of the pediatric surgeons who are operating the genital diseases and all they are themselves saying are patient ko they tell them ki this is not covered you have will have to pay but we have to at least all these people have to be sensitized that they should be telling the public that they should che- recheck their policy and confirm that it is covered and in any case if one <coughs> policy is not covering in day in one year at least experience of one uh, bad experience of one family can definitely yield to a way where other families are benefited and what is our role is that at least the future people are not suffering and these benefits are extended to the people so we all have to work hard on this mainly spreading awareness amongst all the stakeholders all the doctors also who are handling the congenital diseases also pediatricians neonatologists surgeons everybody has to be made aware of this and this forum like this where we are talking now today is definitely going to help us and it will take us away ahead so i compliment dr smita mishra for all the actions and hard work and wish all the best to everybody but then i am just warning or requesting everybody that things are not going to happen automatically it is not a sweet road ahead it is a bumpy road with tough insurance people whom we have to handle at the time of selling insurance their body language is different and when it is coming to paying for the insurance premium they just have to find excuse their business is like that business model is ki get everybody on board and then don't try to try to find excuses of not paying so we have that is the real situation according to me if somebody has any other inputs on this i'll be happy to listen thank you please thank you welcome sir and thank you so much thank you so much bandari sir what you said is exactly right because still uh, they get us on board it's a different body language and once we are on board exclusion is like so simple so it's like we are not humans at all <laughs> so what you said is exactly right so ma'am the next question is um, it is cst automatically make a kid uh, physically unfit for school admissions or college admissions uh, I, mean, I really things. want to uh, know about your experience. Do you think it is happening so? Because I never got this complaint from anyone that a school is denying any admission. Um, we did not get any complaints as such. But nowadays they are asking for uh, information regarding the fitness of the child. When uh, initially, you know, I never like when my son was. Uh, taking an admission this case was not there but nowadays it seems like in the application form uh, they have to uh, give an uh, undertaking saying that okay my child has got any problem or whether the child has not got any problem that has to be given it seems ma'am so if so, the uh, someone uh, says so like, uh, actually uh, what we are doing i am like in my level and i think everybody my fraternity that we are exactly writing that uh, uh, she or he is having this uh, issue underwent surgery or not underwent surgery because it was not recommended as if now and uh, if it is recommended yes it was done uh, and now there is no hemodynamic abnormality patient is absolutely fit and just some restriction about the avoidance of the uh, 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 competitive sports or something like that and now nowadays we are writing in my own uh, 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 like uh, recommendations i write that uh, sports can be allowed or cannot be allowed the particular diet can be allowed or cannot be allowed so we are writing it very clearly and this particularly propo- what i uh, showed you our publication i am trying to get a, uh, a calculator made on this on the three tables so that if you are in table 1 you have no restriction table 2 you may have some restriction and table 3 you have some Uh, quite a few restrictions so this will be very clear and this is under the way 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, regarding the college admission as well, ma'am, because it is usually in the colleges, uh, the same wise, um, uh, the curriculum is like that, like same wise, uh, these people, um, the whole course is divided same wise. And if a child undergoes a surgery, a young adult uh, with CHD, he undergoes a surgery, at least three to four months of rest is like uh, needed. Now, in such a case, the colleges are not ready to take the children in, saying that either they'll have to repeat the same. Uh, or uh, they'll be given a, like a failed certificate because they did not uh, attend the uh, SEM, the SEM uh, attended shortage plus they did not attend the classes. So, so they this, might is the, this is all mindset, Sajni, because they are few of our patients who had around three months bed rest. Uh -huh. So uh, there the teachers actually allowed them to have a class online when uh, the COVID was not there before that also. So uh, they were very, very kind of uh, supportive and uh, they supported child very well. So uh, there was no issue at all. Sometimes if child is not capable of handling the uh, course because of this all ment mentally patient is a little in dilemma in uh, depression. So obviously you can go for a repeat of that semester, but most of the time, if you remain updated, if you are in contact with the teachers, they should provide you teaching material. And uh, the on particularly now in this era of the online classes, I think patient can definitely continue the studies. These are things, again, these things are very kind of individual variation and individual discretion. Mm -hmm. So many uh, teachers, many principals will allow and will be very happy to support a child. Many will not. So that is mindset to some extent uh, to come out with a uniform recommendation yes. that is definitely overdue. Yeah, so a uniform policy has to be there regarding these children, yeah. which the university yeah. also that is Yes. Then what kind of health benefits is a uh, CHD individual entitled to? Are there any health benefits uh, from the government or uh, is there anything what kind like that? Of health benefit, what do you mean by health uh, benefits? I don't know. It's a question that one of the parents had asked. Um, I guess... Maybe, uh, see, uh, like uh, there are certain programs now uh, government of India is launching. I'm very happy the way they are coming up with the health part of thing. They are trying to provide the financial assistance. They are negotiating on PPP and they are also giving a lot of for this thing. And many other birth defects, they have kind of disability benefits also, not the cardiac. It is not included. And uh, health benefit, um, I mean, uh, actually there are no particular benefit because the cardiac diseases are neither included as a cardiac disability, nor, I mean, they can be included in a general uh, sickness where a child is very sick, so should be given certain kind of treatment. So I don't think any special benefit is there. A special benefit only can be a disability benefit. That is not there, okay? Okay, ma'am. Thank you. And the next question is, are there any concessions uh, or help for patients traveling to other cities for treatment? Yes. So uh, uh, there, because I was running a program, so obviously uh, we were uh, making the certificates and lower birth, some concession for the patient was uh, allowed. So it was there. It is there. How do but we apply for a very specific for cardiac patients? Yeah. Achha, achha. So generally, uh, for any kind of disability, the way we apply, the same way we need to apply. Ah, then yes. we might avail. You achha. have to adhere a, a special form. So uh, if you write the ML, you get a uh, signature from doctor, treating doctor. So mm -hmm. they, they will in the train fare and all. They, even the flights, they have certain kind of uh, special arrangements. So just like a patient of a cyanotic child, you have to pick up from somewhere. So many flights, they have a special arrangement where your doctor can come with the patient and all those things. So uh, there are certain kind of arrangement there. Okay, ma'am. The next one is about uh, fitness certificate. When these children grow up uh, to and become 
like adults and they try to get a job or something uh, what is like if they are applying for a government job this fitness certificate the medical fitness certificate has to be given by a government I, doctor uh, that is uh, there are two part of it sajni uh, one is uh, like uh, there might be a medical board which is giving the medical certificate and that board can be very uh kind of um, not very knowledgeable uh -huh. uh, because most of the time there will be a adult cardiologist if any uh, there may not be any cardiologist there may be simple physician though who has some kind of uh, uh, some kind of fanciful idea about the cardiac disease so he will give a certificate like that only he will not go for any test or anything and we are not providing any kind of a specific test as if now my this particular paper it actually classify particular heart disease in the functional term and if this functional ability is absolutely normal it is this certificate should be given for 2 years because then this functional ability can change so it can be renewed over the period of time but uh, if there is no functional disability then Uh, there should not be any contraindication for job so uh, if if like what are what is a child i'm telling you that I mean, there are like the there are now the biggest thing physical activity uh, is in the competitive sports okay mm -hmm. so even competitive sports with the icd mm -hmm. the children who are having icd they um, they can challenge if they are being denied because they have done the studies they found that there might be an increased number of shock but there is no direct injury there is no death and uh, all those things so why should they be denied sport activity yeah, exactly so, uh, so we have to think like that but right now in india we think a heart disease means heart disease that uh, that means virtually it's a disability and uh, if you go for a disability certificate you are definitely not disabled even if you are having yeah. the pdl edema and the uh, sits and pleural effusion so ma'am it's like uh, medically they are unfit to take a government job like whichever one needs a medical certificate and they are, they are not uh, entitled to get a disability certificate so what do these children do what do these young adults do they should just keep on uh, uh, writing the application and just keep on collecting with you and me and so many people and just we have to uh, put it like recently hindu if you have uh, saw that uh, news report in hindu so there was a patient in i think it it was a uh, seaman in the navy and dilated cardiomyopathy was detected and they actually asked for the disability benefit and court Uh, said one thing was like about that navy's uh, rules and regulation but the last page i have actually put that over here yeah disability benefit so court has written the uh, uh, they have written ki Uh, section 2 the act takes into account of visual disability locomotor disability mental illness mental retardation hearing impairment uh, and leprosy a heart element is not covered within the definition of disabilities in the act we would hesitate hesitate to import words so this is the status okay so either ways <laughs> they can not be included there they are not here they are oh, yeah. like midway somewhere that is what i just kept on thinking for last so many years actually ki why not, nobody is ready to do anything i mean people are not together in anything they, i just don't know they uh, it seems like everyone is waiting for some magic to happen i It's i never going to happen one, one whole year to uh, to answer in 5000 words or so to my reviewer ki why i am saying that it should be done so you know it is very tough job to convince people yeah at least if the parents of these kids they become organized they just come together and ask yeah, for uh, some kind of a that. solution so as as this is the parent as. group absence of yeah that is what that is uh, what is activist okay. parent group is the reason why status is in such a shabby situation yeah because i i want to use uh, this opportunity to tell the parents that this is awaiting for you when your kid reaches uh, adulthood 
my son is an adult chd i know what he is facing and what is in store for him when your kids grow up and reach that age getting a job is going to be really difficult because see dr pravin kumar rajpal is my classmate he is a very famous and the renowned pediatrician from satna madhya pradesh he wants to say something please yeah sure sir please sir pravin sir please pravin sir dr pravin rajpal okay i think this please uh, dr pravin you can write also if you are not getting in jonali please try to let him in he is already in ma'am i don't know maybe uh, like uh, you need to okay. unmute sir if you are trying to talk please unmute yourself unmute dr pravin rajpal okay so uh, okay apu you wanted to say something yeah apu yeah, yeah. yeah. apu uh, yeah, you have about two things one is about uh, that uh, um, ex, um, uh, means uh, the uh, disability uh, for uh, children means uh, when i uh, i have uh, written my exams um both board exams in every with everything and uh, i have uh, successfully uh, win that game win that but when i uh, went for a ca this is my chartered accountancy class test i was very much low in ex writing so i asked for the, uh, the uh, board to get give me some extra time in uh, other board exams i have uh, received it but they had asked me to Uh, get a uh, board certificate, medical board certificate, and uh, when I went to medical board, they said that uh, how can I give you? I can only give uh, you only a mental uh, ability stability uh, ability certificate only. That uh, or I can't give any disability certificate on this uh, this writing. Uh, because of that, I was not able to clear that exam. Uh, Ma'am, what? Oh, uh, yes, tell me. how can i a person who i know a congenital heart disease they can go do good very much but if they want uh, they have some they have some restriction so in order to uh, get that rest, uh, get up from that restriction what we will do without the help of the government so uh, apu uh, now i would like to answer that uh, one part is this that congenital heart defect is not causing a limitation of your uh, abilities but the uh, some kind of writing and some dyslexia or something like that it is there so your certificate will come from the that particular part of the fraternity and uh, you are right that medical board needs to be upgraded and the people sitting there must be more refined in their uh, uh, their uh, knowledge and their skills so that they can identify they should not merge things because a congenital they are right that a congenital heart patient who went uh, who underwent operation is having normal functional capacity should not get a kind of disability certificate this is a kind of disability certificate but you need to have a disability certificate from the other doctor who should examine you from the other other uh, other angle other angle so my, that is how it is ma'am my congenital is something different means i am also a dextrocardia with a solid solid no dextrocardia is fine but dextrocardia ko abhi tak utna associate nahi karte there might be associated problems that associated problems will be certified by the appropriate uh, person me medical person this is doctor uh, means uh, now our uh, kk sir krishna kumar sir has given me that certificate who who gave you dr krishna kumar dr r krishna kumar so that's a good thing if he has given then it's good but so many times many people this becomes a personal uh, but uh, discretion so dr krishna kumar understands the whole some issues related like maybe you come to dr rajesh uh, sharma or me we both will give that is for sure 
no uh, but uh, when i but it will not work because we are not in the medical uh, yeah, oh, that is. it will not work that's happened okay uh, actually it seems like the policy making is where we people are all lacking behind until and unless the government like makes the proper policies and makes the proper amends this this flight of these chds is going to continue and uh, it's going to stay like this for maybe god knows how many years or how many decades but together uh, if the parents and all mostly the parents i mean i really feel disheartened when i see that they are also scattered if we stand together we do something together then maybe our children would stand a chance the next one is will uh, yeah the next question is this ma'am like if a uh, young adult okay, uh, chai is... pramil rajpal is, is still raising hand yeah. tell someone to keep on uh... Uh, working on her presence now because it's yeah. muted. He is muted. It's muted. Totally... I, I've asked to unmute, but uh, I mean, it's not working. Okay, okay. it's Appu, not working. Apu, I think you can unmute Dr. Rajpal if you want. Apu, you can also unmute. Who, whosoever is host, you can, you can, you can unmute Dr. Rajpal. No, I am not a host now. Oh. No, I'm trying host? to, sir, but I'm a host. I'm trying to, not able to. Okay. I am also not able to because uh, it's been a while. Some uh, words are like coming over the symbol. This is how it's happening. Okay, okay. Sindhu can do it. Sindhu. Yeah, I, I have also tried. It's not working. Okay. Okay. So next question. Yeah, next question is uh, like uh, if the uh, young adults try to get a job abroad, like if they wish to migrate and settle uh, in some other country other than India or go for a job, uh, for getting a visa or for getting um, like uh, a permission, will this uh, be a problem? Having a CHD or having this kind of a problem? Will Do you have some complaints, complaints like that? No, I have not received any complaints. I'm just... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is see. not a uh, mother like if you are operated you are fine you cannot go for the uh, treatment uh, going for treatment will be a different uh, uh, segment different way of going but if you are going for a job or anything you have to show that you are medically fit you have just a i have done many certificates like that Okay, so in spite of having CHD, uh, they would be getting ah, a clearance from the medical board. No yeah. problem from India. Okay, that's good. Okay, and next one is, um, what are the chances of them getting uh, uh, jobs in the government sector? It's like every job, does every job in the government sector need a medical uh, fitness certificate or uh, it, is it like only particular jobs are there, they can apply for others? Yeah, like the Jonali shared me one uh, case uh, which was like Epstein anomaly. So there was extraordinary physical fitness was needed. Mm -hmm. So the job was denied and it was okay. So uh, definitely. Not to Dr. Rajesh Sharma to work on it that we can uh, bring this classification into uh, applied applied science. Dr. Rajesh Sharma, I invite Dr. Rajesh Sharma to comment on this level. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So, so it was very nice uh, to be on part uh, on the session. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Saj uh, Sajani ji for organizing this meeting and uh, Smita for our highlighting the multiple issues and which these are our dear patients face at all stages of life. Uh, we actually they are becoming for job, government job. Pardon? If anybody, your patient tried government job, so what has happened? They got the job, they were rejected from job. So what, what I do is generally I can issue them a certificate you know, but the boards, like you said, they have their own specific boards which sit and which, uh, which if they entertain your certificate, that's fine. Uh, I have told them that I can speak to somebody, whoever is there on that board, uh, you know, to, to advise them regarding uh, whether a particular person's physical and mental capability is. But uh, beyond that, you know, it is the medical board that is going to decide whether they are going to get in or not. And that is where the guidelines for insurance and disability and all this come in. 
because they will find they will basically say, set up the framework on which these people will base their decisions in future till such time as this is not present their con their decisions will continue to remain arbitrary and limited by their own knowledge and biases thank you very much sir sajni next question yeah um like uh, the next question i would uh, request uh, any of the participants because whatever i have it is like i've covered all the questions and uh, yeah is there any i have few questions? more slides sajni and i really want to go ahead but my slides are not moving uh, ma'am uh, i have sajni uh, ma'am Huh? Yeah, yeah. Please, sir, ask. Please. Uh, ma'am, uh, as of now, is there any restriction for admission uh, of these PhD kids in premier institutions like IITs, what? IIMs, and AIMs? Is there no. any restriction like that? No, no, no. No restriction. This again goes for an individual discretion. Well, mostly there is no restriction. I showed you a slide about the UN uh, Charter, and uh, you have to be given even the. Uh, people with the down syndrome should come in a normal school this is the kind of uh, guidelines are there so you cannot if a person is able and the functional capacities are fine and he is able to carry on the schedule of the of a college they should not be denied okay okay ma'am ah uh, so about the sports so this is a paper from acc those are unsuitable for competitive sports who have cyanosis unrepaired or palliated complex congenital heart disease csd with associated pulmonary hypertension electrophysiological issues and also the pulmonary artery hypertension where you have to avoid the moderate or high altitude above 1500 meter then for the others one has to evaluate history now this is the answer for the for your question admission to uh, college the sports and all those things so they should be evaluated by history nature of heart defect and type of repair what is the heart rhythm what is the blood pressure what is the is there any evidence of heart failure heart dysfunction investigation echo uh, and that should uh, suggest that uh, kind of ventricular structure function pulmonary arterial hypertension what is the kind of aorta is it too dilated arrhythmias and arterial spo2 spo2 in normal term so these are the sports discipline how they are uh, divided according few sports they are more for the skills other are pow for power there are some sports like football where you should have skill and power then there are few sports where you need in endurance so these are the division of the sports that is very important to know before deciding which kind which stream you may go so this is the step 1 history and physical examination step 2 assessment of five parameter at rest step 3 assessment during exercise then if you are normal then you should go for a exercise test step 4 is recommendation on the type of exercise and then step 5 is follow up so this is the color they have showed one is the green one is the red brown and uh, uh, sorry this orange brown and red are a b c d so depending upon all these criteria on examination and our uh, paper is like this only we actually created a objective and the subjective criteria so according to that we have created a b c table here it is a b c d group and uh, based on that your uh, certificate will be issued for the competitive sport so this kind kind of classification can be used for uh, assess your uh, functional capacity and to say that you are totally capable of going for any kind of college activity so this is how it is this is another example i said that even icd with icd uh, competitive sports should not be denied this is what this paper says so icd you know you say i mean nobody i never thought that with icd somebody is going somebody going to recommend this competitive uh, sports eligibility but it is there so you must understand that your physical capacity will always depend upon your 
exercise if you are just uh, restricting yourself you will keep on restricting yourself your lung capacity will go down your muscles will go down so that that's why it is very important to find out your functional capacity and accordingly make a schedule for your exercise so this is one of the important messages uh, uh this is supreme court said and i told you uh, about this particular case i really wanted to tell you about this then uh, uh, the other country yes they are like this is us they have created a cardiovascular disability they keep on updating they introduced it in 2009 2010 2011 it was available on net actually i made mine in 2009 but when then it was not available and it was getting updated it was available on net after 2011 so a uh, long term disability benefit uk so they give so this is what dr alok bhandari said a long way to go <laughs> a long bumpy ride but we will do it i am 100% sure that we are going to do it and uh, things are slowly coming along i have high hopes i never lost hope in last so many years and now dr now they are very very important people are uh, there dr rajesh sharma dr alok bhandari so i think things are going into the uh, right direction only the parents you should be very uh, if uh, you should be very enthusiastic you should be motivated to go for it you should be colliding with the other uh, parent group with the other birth defect so if you make a combined wise probably you will have a better result so that is how it is and jonali can you um, uh, play that poem another poem yes ma'am yes ma'am we are actually waiting to hear that ma'am junali just ah. messaged me so, saying that there is a beautiful poem coming right up ah. so <laughs> that poem uh, why i included this is again mine i translated it from hindi to english and uh, this is parmita mishra my daughter who is reciting that so this is especially she is doing for the all children who are there in i don't know if they are there in this session but they should not go with the low heart or thinking that nothing can be done for us now because we all have our own field and we can always work on that uh, junali please can i start sharing this shall we ah yes it's not your chariot that is not your path right from beginning please junali wo sunai nahi diya can you replay it uh, replay. yeah from the beginning yeah, yeah. just and the volume needs to be a little bit loud uh, yeah uh. yeah sexually maximum okay your children grown up with heart disease destruction is not your chariot death is not your path death is a dimension a full stop for all beyond which there is no path but before that thousand stories waiting for you why are you detached from them succeed or fail it's a matter of chance how could an ignorant society would decide don't be affected by them you are your own standard and no one has the right to judge you are victorious you are capable you are the charioteer of your chariot choose your way your destination to choose joy of this journey and collect pearls of experience fill your bag with other sorrow and sprinkle happiness on them you have all the qualities to be a sun so keep shining darkness is not your path ignorance is not your chariot you're part of god so fear not fear not thank you that's amazing <laughs> and so beautifully recited as well uh it's, it's really beautiful I, i mean i'm sure we all connected with it and one of the parents actually commented as well oh my god thank you it is awesome 
<laughs> so cute. And uh, the day when we become victorious, when we when the government finally uh, opens up to us and uh, gives us solutions rather than uh, uh, like uh, putting us in different compartments like okay BPL, APL, and all. I mean, health issues, uh, they don't come looking at your age or uh, your gender or your caste or your creed or your uh, economic status. It just comes and everything just uh, goes out of control. So I would really want the government to do something about it. Ma'am, can you just suggest, can we have a sitting or can we have uh, uh, the health minister uh, like uh, really listening to us one on one? Is it possible? Like we are all humans. Uh -huh. We are planning for that. And yeah. we'll we are planning for that. We will do it. I'm very sure. And now Dr. Bandari is there. Dr. Rajesh Sharma is there. And you people are getting, uh, you are gearing up. I'm 100% sure we are going to do that. I have no second opinion. Yeah. Second yeah. thoughts. They really and I, somebody is asking about UDID card. Yeah. What if yes, yes, yes. Uh, whichever parent that is, can you please come up with your question? You can just ask a question straight up, sir, by unmuting yourself. Can I apply I for the UDID uh, card on the basis of dextrocardia? Uh, that is from Kishore Kumar. Uh, Ma'am, I think it should be unique disability ID card. I think this okay. should be a short form, this UDID. Achha, achha. No, no, I don't think so. Abhi, right now, there is no provision, actually. Yeah, so we are amidst so many no's, and uh, we'd be this happy when all those no's uh, get converted into yes. And... Um, uh, like I would like to uh, what to say uh, borrow a sentence from uh, Alik Pad uh, Padamsi. Um, a student of mine actually shared it with me. It says India is a uh, India is a first world nation with a third world government, and uh, I feel <laughs> it is so. If the government doesn't see the pain of those people who really need it, and uh, they are very concerned about a category, and they feel that the middle class people can survive. And uh, they are just there as cows that can be milked every now and then. And uh, the vote bank is what they are looking at. Then it's uh, it's going to be like another Sri Lanka <laughs> for sure. If this no, is no, what no. is going and to these, happen. These, these are the very, very uh, please, please, nobody should think like this. Government is doing great job. And they are providing so many Ayushman card and all those things. They are trying to do their best. Only thing, the, like uh, this uh, inclusion of 21 diseases. In disability bill, how it has happened? Because but those twenty middle class group, is not there. That is where I am telling you. I am telling you those twenty one diseases which were included, the people were active. They were trying to do it, and we were not doing anything. I was do. I was trying to do this since two thousand nine. I didn't have any other person with me. And uh, the, I had even appointment with the Minister for the Disability, uh, Department of Disability. I had a meeting fixed even. But I could not gather the people whom I had to take there. there. My only single voice cannot be heard. That is what, ma'am. So I uh, please, Emma, don't think that uh, uh, because every government is like that and they are doing a lot of things if they are included 21 diseases so 22nd is like in this, there is a problem in 22nd disease because it never was uh, uh, given when it was like when the process was on we are out of this process that is the problem but it will be done i am telling you the uh, once we are together and we we are able to have a group effort we will be able to do it yeah because most of the thing is concentrated upon like uh, the lower uh, class people because i understand they really need it but the middle class is a majority <clears throat> ma'am and you know we are all salaried persons and when a chd uh, kid is there and everything like it's very difficult to manage and with the government having uh, a totally like okay they'll survive kind of an attitude it pains us it, it feels like we feel like we are part of this country but still it is as if we, we don't belong here. We don't. They don't need us here. But what future does our kid have uh, in a country which is so magnificent, so beautiful? We talk of Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu and a part of its own citizen is ignored. But it doesn't make sense at all. Hopefully... Say something. Yeah, Alok Mandhari, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Alok Mandhari, sir. Yes. Uh, well, friends, Dr. Sangna, you, I'll just slightly differ from you and I'll take you back to history. India has been uh, traditionally, Indians have been uh, colonially under slavery of British. Uh, 
and we have not come out of that as yet age mentally indians are depending on that and the bureaucracy the file work the way to do things has been just taking too long and maybe that is one thing that is responsible second is a human attitude that why i should do it and put it on the others ke no individual person is willing to they own it up and do yeah. it as a mission and That's then right. third thing i will say ki bina roe to maa bhi doodh nahi deti hai bacche ko <laughs> so affected parties have to work slightly extra you have to walk extra mile to make people realize and i can assure you in my experience also dr smita mishra's experience also where wherever we have approached we have received full cooperation and help and support and nobody has ever denied ki yes this is a wrong demand or wrong complaint but the only thing is that the system changes takes time and somebody has to follow them diligently and sincerely like during my tenure of national neonatology forum it ended in seven, uh, two year, maybe three years four years back so after that the continuity has stopped then there was covid so but things are improving whatever we have achieved and we'll gradually achieve more we should be persisting and now i can assure dr smita mishra that i i am currently joint secretary of national iap and based in delhi ncr only for this job to take child take up child health issues with the government and we will surely be doing something and i can i can give a positive hope that within next two years of my tenure till 23 end you will see some more positive changes in all the directions and we will get these issues sorted out once these guidelines are already there we just now have to ensure their compliance and emphasize that they have to be followed in letter and spirit it is there in fine print but then some vested interest they distort it and at sometimes the ignorance also plays its roles so awareness is another factor that we have to continue do it so, so uh, i endorse the views expressed by dr bandari because this project was taken up by the indian association of cardiothoracic surgeon dr hiremath the secretary of the uh, iacts especially said that i will take up this cause with the ministry and uh, and even dr krishna kumar so everybody said but in between this covid period has actually given a Kind of, kind of uh, discontinuation of the whole effort. I think that is the reason why we could not do anything. And uh, there is another thing, ma'am, like um, uh, regarding not just the uh, fitness and the insurance part and all, uh, about the funding also. It's a big concern because for adult uh, cardiology, where the children reach the adulthood, a uh, lot of research, I guess, needs to be there. And if uh, proper arrangement is there for the funding to doctors, that would be really good. Uh, uh, like i don't think there is that much of funding that goes into the uh, adult cardiology wherein the children who chds who reach uh, the adulthood and when the doctors are doing research there has to be like lots of money involved and uh, i mean i don't know much about it but i have heard that some of the doctors are not getting proper funding and also for, is there any solution to this ma'am see um, uh, sajni uh, like uh, you are absolutely right that uh, there is some kind of uh, mismatch between the supply and demand and uh, that things uh, can be corrected because dr rajesh sharma uh, uh, under the leadership of dr rajesh sharma the pcsi uh, group of the doctors met with the ministry people and they said uh, like the uh, right now whatever the costing has been proposed by the government is quite less it is very old actually so they said yes you people are right and we will definitely reconsider everything it will take time one year or two year but they are working on it okay ma'am okay really and nice. dr shrinivas is there and probably he would like to say something dr shrinivas yes dr shrinivas yeah Uh, hi uh, sorry i joined very late actually i got held up in uh, some other work uh, yes okay welcome welcome yeah. to the shikha yes yes welcome sir i don't know to go through the whole meeting because i also don't know many aspects that you are discussing today uh, yes madam uh, the concerns for all the pediatric cardiologists and pediatric uh, surgeons in india is the same 
one there is no insurance support we need to push government to do something into uh, inclusion of all these children with congenital heart disease in uh, health insurance schemes and it has to be made as mandate that is one point agenda that we need to fight for uh, including congenital heart disease and disability madam you are doing a lot of work i would say almost single handedly but we are all ready to render support whenever whatever form you want madam please include us in all these things it is something which is very very important uh, for survival of all these children and uh, for their safeguard. Uh, yeah, third thing, funding, as Madam has already said, this is pan-India problem. So even though government is having lots of schemes, the reimbursement that the government is doing for all these children with congenital heart disease is not adequate to treat every single child with heart disease. So these are the three agendas I think uh, uh, we would uh, like to focus on in uh, whatever time that it requires. Um, yeah. So I think this same things were discussed in the meeting also. I would be happy that uh, we progress in all these three forms. Uh, I'm uh, a pediatric cardiologist working in a private hospital in Mumbai. Uh, so that's my introduction. Thank you, uh, Dr. Srinivas. He is always very generous and very concerned person. And that's why I'm so happy that he joined us. And uh, the other thing is uh, what I keep on writing everywhere. Uh, whatever letter I make for any uh, person that government should get rid of CDHS, CSI and all these things and should come up with the corporate kind of coverage for any uh, population, BPL or whatever are implies so that uh, the network for the uh, insurance increases and then premium comes down, then the better kind of coverage can be given. So uh, right now, the problem is the uh, covered population is quite less because in India, people take insurance for the as a tax deduction uh, method. Uh, they don't exactly understand that the uh, quality of care is going up, then cost of care is also going up. So they need to pay really a good amount of money and it's always better to have a high end uh, premium uh, the uh, health insurance so the more people will take more popularized it will be more uh, insurance agencies will be generous enough to accept the other uh, category of the patients so that is very important i i actually for this particular thing uh, because we were making a concept note i put a query on the uh, policy.com and i got at least I think 20, 25 queries, and everybody says we have newborn coverage, but we don't cover the birth defect, which is absolutely wrong because, because of the new guidelines. So I kept on telling them that you people are doing wrong, <laughs> but it makes no difference to them. Yes, ma'am, and uh, thank you so much, Srinivas, sir. Right. And uh, uh, Rajesh Sharma, Dr. Rajesh Sharma has uh, put in a message in the chat box. He, uh, he says, we need to have a meeting with IRDAI as to uh, how the insurance companies are not following the guidelines. Uh, yeah, so he had he just had to leave. That's why he left the message here. And uh, that's really he true. He's there, he's still yeah. there. He's, he's there. still so, there, Acha. So can I, can I, uh, I had to go actually, you know, so uh, I'm happy that uh, Smita ji and uh, Sajni ji, you invited me to this very important meeting. I think we need to have more parents in the group. The, the group has to be really big, you know, yeah. to have a voice and to be effective. That is number one. So from our side, you know, we can spread to all our patients that we should, you know, this, there's, a, there's a group like this and you should join this group. And previous patients, uh, coming patients, you know, all of them should be part of it. In this age of social media, I think this can be done much more efficiently. And we need to have a combined meeting with government officials and the insurance companies and the IRDI, I think ultimately. And this is what is going to take us forward. And with all the parents in, uh, you know, in attendance and using Twitter and you know, all the social handles available, there has to be a big noise on this injustice that is going on. I think that is the way forward. I am sure it is going to work because there is, there is, all the, there, this is the, uh, there is an, this is the time for this uh, idea to come in force, and it will. It is long overdue, and I'm sure it will. Uh, Dr. Bandari has really uh, given some encouraging words, and I think we should all work together with the IAP, IAP and all the issues. You know, will get sorted out finally. So, uh, wishing all of us a very good. Uh, 
uh, you know, future in this direction. Uh, I'm sorry I have to leave now because I have to take rounds in the hospital. So uh, I beg you leave, but uh, I thank you all for inviting me. Thank, thank you, you so Mr. much, Dr. Sir, for being here. And I'm sure with you and with all others and with uh, Smita Mishra, ma'am, and all, we are going to make at least some, some kind of a... Uh, like uh, an impact upon the government and the government might change its policies and uh, become a little bit more kinder towards the CHD. So it's all that I mean, we ask. I would like to tell you that please make it an official meeting between the IAP, PCSI and, uh, uh, and your group and uh, write down this minute. Uh, whatever we discussed and this will be the first meeting official and the people who were there particularly right. doctors and the parents and you just name them and that is how a way forward okay yes ma'am surely i'll do that ma'am yes we really need to okay. have this meeting yes, ma yes, ma huh? yes thank you wait wait ma'am uh, there is a uh, there is a question coming from such ma'am just uh, ah, yeah, tell me. yes yes Suchi yes, Shmita has my name in her name, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Firstly, I want to thank the doctors because it's really very touching to see the doctors doing so much. Too much. And unfortunately, as parents group, we are not matching up to that. So what my question is, like, apart from like webinars like this, which we have organized, what are the ways parents group can proactively participate in bringing awareness and then once awareness is there only then we can you know step forward uh, to bring the policies or to uh, demand for the changes which we are looking for so, so, so Sajni, any Sita, uh, that we discussed in a uh, whatsapp group with the sajni and uh, i i just forgetting the name so uh, you need to create a official organization that is the first way forward i said i will contribute for the initial official cause I told that 25,000 I'm going to contribute, just take it forward and whatever, uh, not more than that uh, will be expenditure. So just take that from me and you just uh, register your uh, this thing, uh, 800 uh, because it will be a in India level organization. Mm -hmm. So you need at least eight people from 80 states and I can provide you the name of people also from different states. So whatever effort can uh, can be supported by me, I will support. It should be doctors, it should be parents, and it should be uh, even uh, like a who should be part of it. So uh, that is all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Uh, ma'am, uh, uh, I checked it actually here in Uttar Pradesh, and uh, uh, I, found, uh, uh, I checked it here about the procedures and formalities of registering the society. So, mm -hmm. if it's, it's uh, it is to be formed that is state level, seven, seven members will be required. But the problem is that all the documents, all the pages must be physically signed by each and every member. So, okay, uh, uh, don't worry, it will all be done. It will be a way to do it. Okay, ma'am. Second, uh, so for, this was the first thing. Second problem was that uh, no government employee uh, can be uh, a chair, uh, can hold a chair in that society. You know, this is another problem. It's okay. You can let the mother of child be part of it, your wife, if she is not a government. Ma'am, she is also an employee. That's why this is the problem. But so, okay. actually, I can, put a, I can put a dummy person and uh, actually I will work uh, on behalf of that person only. This is the way out. This is the solution I found out for that matter. So, so if okay, everyone is ready, so we the, should uh, go ahead with the uh, with the formally making that organization. If everyone is willing, uh, yeah, I am. I am willing. I am ready. <laughs> anything, anything <laughs> for these kids, I am ready to do. <laughs> That's for okay. sure. We'll try, ma'am. We'll try. Uh, no? uh, soon we'll be. I'll visit that office, and we'll let you know in the group. Yes. Okay. Sure, okay. sure. Okay. Done. And uh, may I ask Risma now to like uh, uh, propose a vote of thanks. Risma. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Today I am taking this opportunity Hi, to Rishma. propose the vote of thanks. Hello, ma'am. Your wife is not Dr. Smith. She has to speak loud. Yes. Louder, uh, Risma. Respected Dr. Smita, Mr. Ma'am. First of all, I express my sincere thanks to you for gracing today's webinar and for your support to our cause. I'd like to deliver hearty vote of thanks to Dr. Rajesh Sharma sir for being among us. I express our gratitude to all the guests 
including the doctors, Dr. Alok Bhandari sir, Dr. Srinivas sir, Dr. Rasmi Grover, Dr. Prabhat Kumar, Dr. Supriya Soudhuri. She is from my city, Dr. Supriya Soudhuri. Okay, anyhow, so all the doctors uh, who instead of their busy schedule are present here and showing their support for the CSD community of India. Finally, I would like to thank one and all present here for making today's webinar meaningful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So we can leave now. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Take it for official time. minute, okay? okay. So, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Bye. thank you. Uh, two people are like, uh, raising hands now. Uh, yes, and Hartan and uh, Suchishmita, anything to say, ma'am? No, Dr. not really. I, I just don't know how to put the hand down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dr. Prabhat okay. Kumar left. He didn't speak anything. Acha, ayo. I, Dr. Prabhat Kumar? No. Yeah, I, I mean, is he, he still left. there? Okay. He left, it seems, ma'am. Doesn't matter. Next meeting is there, right? When we are together, <laughs> once again, we'll get a chance to share. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being here and uh, helping us out with the uh, all our apprehensions, all the queries that were, was put uh, forward and uh, being associated with you gives us immense strength. Uh, that's true. And our association is going to be there, ma'am. And with under your guidance and leadership, it's going to happen. And I, I'm there no matter what, till everything goes, I'll say you, you and I'm going you to be know there. what we made for the uh, something else, but I've shared that MOU with you, ma'am. Huh, huh, ma yes, ma'am. So you have all the there. basic paperwork you can do based on that, right? Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, thank, thank you thank so much. You. God bless, ma'am. So, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Where is Sindhu? I'm not able to see Sindhu. Sindhu? I'm here. I'm here. Uh, thank you, yeah, Sindhu. <laughs> Come video.